I have right here in my utility belt. So if your wallet's kind of empty because you've just bought yourself a new iPhone, or maybe you're watching this on a private jet, either way, you probably want to get your money's worth out of your new iPhone. And I've got 10 tips, tricks, and hidden features for you guys that not many people know about. And before we get on to tip number one, I want to shout out the sponsor of this channel, The Ridge. They make these really incredible premium built wallets and you can get 45% off if you use the code what gear at the checkout i'll tell you what makes these special a little bit later on in the video but check this out this is my one here that right there is damascus steel anyway tip number one so you're an ios user and one of the things you're going to use on a daily basis is a web browser and i do recommend you use the safari browser because it's built by apple it's optimized for this phone and it's also the safest one to use with the iphone but when you open the safari browser you're faced with a really boring page that looks like this. Did you know you can set your own custom wallpaper for Safari? Check this out, open up a new tab, just go here, hit the little plus, and you'll have a page like this. Hit the edit at the bottom here, and at the bottom of this page where it says background image, turn that on, and you could choose one from your gallery or choose one of the custom ones. I've got this one from my gallery here, downloaded it today. And there we go, we now have a custom wallpaper for Safari. That makes this look so much better. So tip number two, this one could be incredibly useful for some of you guys out there if you use it the correct way. So let's say, for example, you're researching something for school. Maybe you want to buy something, for example, a PlayStation headset. Now, I recently researched the top five PlayStation headsets. And if I start opening up new pages now and searching new things, they're all going to get mixed together with this search here. What you can now do, thanks to Safari, is you can actually group open tabs together. So this is how you do it. Hit the little icon bottom right corner that opens up all of the tabs here in the background. And then we can use this little downward arrow and then go to new tab group from the seven tabs that's open. And we can name it PS5. Headphones. That group is now saved in Safari. So I can start searching new things now in new tabs, but whenever I want to, I can go back to the icon bottom left corner and open up that group. And just for example, I was looking for a new microphone earlier and I was looking at a few different ones and I can bring up my microphone group here so I can look at the microphones that I was researching earlier. So use this for schoolwork, use this for purchases or reading material. It is an incredibly useful feature right there within Safari. So I don't know about you, but for me, I quite often forget to close tabs down in the background within Safari. And what will happen is if you leave these in the background all the time, they'll start to use up cache. And when I say cache, I'm not talking about money, I'm talking about memory on your phone, and that could potentially slow your phone down. So here's a little tip that will help prevent this from happening. Check this out, go to settings, here it is Safari. Now on this page, you wanna scroll down to where it says close all tabs, and here you can actually choose what happens by default it will be on manual so they'll only close the day you tell them to close the problem is that day may never come and that means those web pages will be in the background in safari forever so what you can do here is you can set once a day once a week or once a month once a month is ideal i will say this if there is important websites that you need to keep open add them to your bookmarks add them to your reading list and that way you'll always be able to access them from Safari, even if they get closed down in the background after one month. This is definitely a useful trick. Okay, tip number four. So you're probably familiar with the new app library here, but you still might have some pages like this with just a couple of random apps that you don't wanna put in the library, but you still wanna keep them kind of on a page, but maybe you just wanna make this page disappear from time to time. Well, there's a way to do that. Very easy to do. Hold your finger down on an empty part of the screen. Everything starts to jiggle like this. And then what you want to do here is hit the dots at the bottom and that will open up your home screen pages and see the little ticks underneath if we untick them we can actually make those pages disappear temporarily so now i just have three pages and that fourth page has disappeared if i want to bring it back hold my finger down on an empty part of the screen everything jiggles again hit the dots at the bottom again tick the box and that will bring back that fourth page so let's say you've got 10 pages and you only really use three you can hide all of the other seven and just bring them back when you need them. Tip number five. So I know what you're thinking. You're probably wondering, why do I have this empty space right here 
in the middle of my home screen. Well, I've been using Android phones for the last 10 years and I'm used to having a space between my clock and my apps. And I just like to keep apps at the bottom of the screen because that's where my thumb can reach. So I don't really need apps here in the middle. So I've discovered a way to make that happen here on an iPhone. But it's even better because check this out, I've got hidden widgets right here. So I've got my Google search, I've got well clocks, and just like that, it's gone. Now, if you wanna set something like this up for yourself, I'll show you how to do it. You need to download an app. This is the only app that I'm gonna tell you to download. Everything else is native to the iOS. So check this out, go to the app store, type in MD blank. That is what this app is called. So we open MD blank, and here is where we can create our clear background widget. So right now I've got the Batman background, but just for example's sake, I'm gonna create a new one. So I'm gonna choose a new wallpaper and make sure you turn off perspective zoom. So just at the bottom here. Okay, so now we've chosen a new wallpaper. All we need to do next is hold your finger down on an empty part of the screen. Everything starts to jiggle. Swipe across like you're creating a new page. But here we're gonna screenshot this empty page by holding the power button and the up volume rocker. And now we have a screenshot of that wallpaper as it would be on your home screen. And now we can go back to the MD blank app and replace these like so. Now that that's done, hold your finger down on an empty part of the screen, hit the plus at the top corner here, scroll down till you see your MD blank icon here and here we can choose the widget. So I'm gonna choose this one, add the widget to the screen. And now we have a blank widget right here, but we can't see it until we stack other things onto it. So we can go like this, plus, let's say we wanna add this, photos, add that, and we can drag that on to the MD blank, like so. Disappeared, now it's here. Now it's disappeared again. So that's how you can create hidden widgets on your home screen. It's super easy to do, it's very useful, and you'll like it that bit more if you're coming over from Android. So I just wanna shout out the sponsor of this video and tell you what they're all about. So the Ridge make these premium material wallets. They can hold up to 12 cards while still remaining slim. They are RFID blocking, which means people can't digitally pickpocket you or clone your cards whilst they're in these wallets. You can change the attachments on the back. They do give you a lifetime warranty. And if you do decide to buy one and you don't like it, you have 45 days to send it back. That's how confident they are in this product. And I was a bit skeptical at first, but having used this for a while now, I'm extremely happy with it. And I'm kind of torn between this Damascus one and the titanium one. They're both truly awesome. I highly recommend the Ridge. Use the code what get at the checkout and you will get 45% off of one of these awesome wallets. It could be the last one you ever need to buy because of that lifetime warranty. Tip number six, in the future, one day, trust me when I say this, it will be normal to have an AI chip implanted in your brain. But right now, we have AI on our smartphones. So we can summon them and ask them questions whenever we want. Let's say you're at school or college or university and you need to know the answer to something and pretend like you actually knew the answer when you actually didn't, you asked your AI, but you can't ask it with your voice because that would give away the game. There is a way around this. This is how you do it. Go to settings, then go to accessibility. Here, go to Siri. And at the top here where it says type to Siri, turn that on. Now what you can do with your iPhone is hold the power button down to summon Siri silently and ask a question. And Siri and your AI assistant will reply in silence with the answer. Is there something else I can help with? Just try not to say that name. Why did you say that name? Now here's tip seven, another Siri related tip. So we go back to settings. From here, we go to Siri and search. Here you can change Siri's voice. So you might have noticed my Siri has an Irish accent. I don't know why I just thought I'd try it out, but we have Irish, South African, Indian, British, 
Australian and American. And there are variations of the voice as well. So you can choose different ones. For me, sticking with the Irish one for now. If you go into Siri responses, you can actually turn on captions and you can also turn on always show speech. So when you talk to Siri, you'll actually be able to see what Siri's hearing. So this will be even more important, especially when it comes to maths equations and stuff like that, to make sure the Siri's hearing what you're saying the correct way. So I do recommend you turn these on. Now check this one out. This is an awesome new feature. So let's say you're at a work do or something like that. Someone gives you a business card and it's got some information on it, like a website or an email address, phone number, anything like that. You can actually use your camera on your iPhone to take the data from the photo straight onto the phone. So all you need to do to do this is hit the little text box, which appears here at the bottom right corner. And then we can actually even just click that link and that will open that website straight away on your phone. If there's an email address on that business card, you can email them straight away just by using your camera. This is a game changer. So thank you guys for making it all the way to tip number 10. And of course, I've saved what I consider the best tip for the end. And this is really for you guys who are invested in the Apple ecosystem. For example, let's say you've got an Apple Mac, you've got a MacBook and maybe an iPad. This one is going to blow your mind. So check this out. I've made a quick note in the notes app, but it doesn't have to be in the notes app. It can be in any text at all. I'm going to copy this text here on the phone. Now check this out. I'm going to go over to the Apple Mac here and open a doc in Google Docs, just for example's sake. And actually what I can do now is paste the text from the phone onto the desktop and I can push Command V, paste it as many times as I want. Check this out over here on Adobe Photoshop. I've got a document open here and this is just to demonstrate that you can do this cross apps doesn't matter what it is, we can paste the text from the iPhone to any other Apple device that's on the same Wi-Fi network, whether that's an iPad, a MacBook, an Apple Mac, desktop, it doesn't matter. And when you think about the practical use for this, especially for schoolwork and stuff like that, it could be incredibly, incredibly useful for you guys. So use this one as you will. So you've made it this far and of course I've saved some bonus content for you guys who are most interested in this video. So check this out. Let's go back to Safari. Remember those tab groups that I showed you how to make? There's a really easy way to actually skip back and forwards between tabs if you're comparing stuff. So let's say for example the PlayStation headsets that I was looking at earlier. Let's look at this one. If I want to have a look at another one very quickly, three finger pinch inwards brings us back to this screen. Go to this one, three finger pinch inwards go to this one. It's just a really good way of going back and forwards between tabs within Safari. That's a handy little trick there. Could save you some time and time is important because nobody can give you your time back. So here's the last bonus tip for you guys. And this really applies for those of you out there who have kids or who let other people use their phone. You'll want to do this. So go to settings, go to screen time here, go to content, privacy and restrictions. Now what you can do here is actually set restrictions and age limits on the content that can be accessed using this phone. So you can go to content restriction here and there's various things you can do here. So spend some time, have a look at these settings and definitely think about using these before you hand your phone over to somebody else. So there we go, there are 10 plus a couple of bonus tips and tricks for you guys. If you enjoyed this one, you'll probably get some value out of these other thumbnails on screen right now. I've got a ton more tips and tricks, so make sure you're subscribed for those in the future. Appreciate you guys. If you just subscribed, you're now one of the finest subscribers known to man, and I will see you in the next one, so don't be late. Let's go, but inconspicuously.